Good afternoon, everybody. Today, we'll continue with the uh, probability theory, unit one. Today, I'm going to take up the topic of binary symmetric channel. is called BSC in short. What is this binary symmetric channel? We will try to understand. We know that when data is represented only in logic high or low, that is 1 or 0 format, it is called binary representation. In communication systems, data is transmitted from source to destination. The data obtained from the source is processed in amplifiers, filters, attenuators, modulators and demodulators. The data is transmitted through wired or wireless medium or channel. During this whole process, the signal or the data being transmitted is corrupted by noise at various stages. This noise is unavoidable in the practical system and does not have any fixed format. Due to noise, a binary 1 transmitted from the source may be received as a binary 0 at the receiver or destination and vice versa. Such a channel is symmetric because probability of introducing error is same for both the binary symbols 0 and 1. Since noise has random behavior and errors can be introduced in the signal randomly, it is not possible to perfectly predict the error in the received signal because noise is random in nature and errors can be introduced randomly. Therefore, the probability of getting an error can only be obtained using the probability theory. In the previous session, I have discussed about probability theory. This is where we can make use of the probability theory. Now, we can have an optimum receiver algorithm for such a binary communication channel. Optimum receiver algorithm. A0 and A1 represent the events of transmitting symbols 0 and 1 respectively. So, A0 is one event which represents transmission of symbol 0. A1 is another event which represents transmitting of the symbol 1 or symbols, symbol 1 okay, respectively. Now, if we write P of A0 or P of A1. So, this P of A0 represents probability of sending a binary symbol 0. Similarly, P of A1 represents the probability of sending a binary symbol 1. Okay. So, with what probability we are sending these symbols either 0 or 1 that is represented by these sim symbols. Since the occurrence of 0 and 1 in a binary data stream does not have the same frequency, you can have different number of zeros and different number of 1s. So, the frequency of these symbols 0 and 1 will not be same. That is why this P of A0 or P of A1 
will also be different they will not be same these probabilities are called a priori probabilities a priori probabilities because they refer to the events a0 and e1 a1 that are observed before the fact that means at the stage of transmission not at the stage of receive reception similarly if events b0 and b1 b0 and b1 represent the reception of symbols 0 and 1 respectively what is b0 b0 is an event where we receive a zero symbol b1 is an event which represents reception of a one symbol one okay then similarly we can write p of b0 and p of b1 where p of b0 represents the probability of receiving a binary symbol zero and p of b1 represents probability of receiving a binary symbol one we know that symbol 0 may be transmitted and because of error or noise a 1 may be received at the receiver end 0 is transmitted but 0 is not received a 1 is received in place of 0 because of noise and vice versa okay a 1 may be transmitted and a 0 may be received at the receiver end from the received events b0 and b1 it is not possible to determine with certainty which of the symbols was sent just because we have a event b0 which represents reception of a zero symbol zero it does not mean that a zero was transmitted just because i have received a one here with this event b1 with some probability p of b1 it does not mean that a one was transmitted at the have been all because of noise a zero may change to one or a one may change to zero because even if symbol one is received okay it is possible that originally transmitted symbol was zero but errors made it a one therefore an algorithm called optimum receiver algorithm is developed for binary communication channel or binary trick channel now what is this optimum receiver algorithm let us try to understand consider that b0 is received then that represents that b0 is the event okay that represents that a zero has been how to compare two conditional probabilities that is p of a0 slash b0 and p of a1 slash b0 we have to compare these two probabilities so what is the meaning of p of a0 slash b0 it represents probability of a0 being the message or symbol sent given that b0 has been received similarly p of a1 slash b0 represents probability of a1 being the message or symbol sent given that b0 has been received these conditional probabilities are also called transition probabilities these are called a posteriori probabilities a posterior probabilities so from these conditional probabilities it is clear that if b0 is received if b0 is received that means zero has been received and b0 is the 
event okay then we have to choose a0 as the transmitted symbol if probability of a0 slash b0 is greater than the of slash b0 choose a1 okay if this probability probability of a0 slash b0 is less than probability of a1 similarly if b1 is received then we have these probabilities Suppose B1 has been received, that means a one symbol 1 has been received that has generated an event B1, okay. So in this case, we need to consider these two probabilities, probability of A1 slash B1, probability of A0 slash B1. In this case, okay, if B1 has been received, then automatically we need to choose A1 as the transmitted symbol only if this probability, probability that A1 slash B1 is greater than probability of A0 slash B1. Else, we choose A0 as the transmitted symbol. That is when probability of A1 slash B1 is less than probability of A0 slash B1. This algorithm is called optimum receiver algorithm. Now, for this binary communication channel or binary symmetric channel, we can draw something known as transition probability diagram. Let us see how it looks like. So this diagram is known as transition probability diagram of binary symmetric communication channel. So here in this diagram we have A0 which represents uh, an event wherein a 0 is transmitted from the transmitter end and on the other side we have A1 which represents an event wherein a 1 is transmitted from the transmitter side. Okay, similarly on the other side okay, this is at the transmitter side and this is the receiver side the receiver side what may happen okay when a zero or one is transmitted from the transmitter side what may happen at the receiver side at the receiver side i may receive a zero that is represented by this b0 which is an event of getting receiving a zero or else it can be an event b1 a 1 being received at the receiver side. Okay. Now, all these events have their own probabilities. If I want to transmit a 0, if a 0 is transmitted, at what probability, with what probability it is transmitted is represented by P of A0. If a 1 is transmitted, with what probability a 1 is transmitted, that is represented by P of A1. Similarly, if I receive a 0 at the receiver side, 
with what probability I may receive that is represented by P of B0. Similarly, if I receive a 1 at the receiver side, okay, with what probability I can receive that 1 that is represented by this P of B1. Okay. Apart from these probabilities, we have some conditional probabilities also as shown in this diagram. Okay, what are these things? Look at this uh, conditional probability. Probability of B0 slash A0. Okay, what is the meaning of this? Okay, the meaning of this is probability of receiving a 0 at the receiver side. Okay, given that a 0 has been transmitted at the transmitter side. Okay, this represents that thing. Similarly, P of B1 slash A1, what it represents? It represents probability of receiving a 1 at the receiver side given that a 1 has been transmitted at the transmitter side. Okay. Similarly, this P of B0 slash A1 represents that probability of receiving a 0 given that a 1 has been transmitted. If a 1 has been transmitted, I should not receive a 0, but there is some small probability, however small it can be, okay, that I may receive a 0 at the receiver side due to again error or noise. Okay. So, that small probability is represented by this thing, probability of receiving a 0 when a 1 has been transmitted. Similarly, probability of receiving a 1 when a 0 has been transmitted. So, all possibilities are considered in this diagram for uh, binary symmetric channel. Okay. So, for this binary symmetric channel, we can write some of the probabilities. Now, we can write the equations for probability of receiving a 0, that is P of 0. How can I write the expression for P of B0 or P of B1? Okay, we can write the expression for P of B0 as P of B0 slash A0, that is this one, okay, into P of a0 probability that 0 has been transmitted at the transmitter side plus probability of B0 slash A1 that is this probability of B0 slash A1 multiplied by P of A1. P of A1. Similarly, probability of B1 can be written in a similar manner as B1 slash A1 that is this one multiplied by P of A1 plus probability of receiving a B1 given A0 has been transmitted multiplied by probability of A0. These are the two equations. Similarly, we can write the conditional probabilities that is probability of A0 slash B0. Okay, A0 slash B0 that is probability that a 0 has been transmitted given that a 0 has been received. That can be written as P of A0 into P of B0 slash A0 Okay, probability of A0 slash B0 represents probability of receiving a 0 when a 0 was transmitted. Probability of A1 slash B1 represents probability of receiving a 1 when 1 was transmitted. This can be written in this form. P of A0 slash B0 is equal to P of A0 multiplied by P of B0 slash A0 divided by P of B0. Similarly, P of A1 slash B1 is equal to P of A1 multiplied by P of B1 slash A1 divided by P of B1.
Now, the next one is probability of error. Or probability of correct reception. That is P of C. Okay. So these two things are related as P of E plus P of C is equal to one. Okay. Always the sum of these two things, probability of error plus probability of correct reception, must be equal to one because these two therefore we can write p of e is equal to 1 minus p of c p of c okay and this p of c itself can be written like this probability of correct perception is given by probability of a0 into probability of b0 slash a0 plus probability of a1 b1 slash a1 so this is how we can express the probability of correct determination or probability of correct reception that is p of c is equal to p of a0 assuming that a0 has been transmitted multiplied by probability that a 0 has been received given that 0 has been transmitted plus probability that a 1 is transmitted multiplied by probability that a 1 has been received given that a 1 has been transmitted. These two, uh, some of these two terms use probability of correct nation P of C. The next topic is random variables. We can think of outcome of a trial or experiment as a variable which can range over a set of sample points. Whenever we conduct an experiment, we will have some outcomes. These outcomes may have some values which can vary. And these variables are called random variables. Therefore, a random variable is defined as a function which takes on any value from the sample space and whose range is some set of real numbers. If the outcome of an experiment is a sample point S, then the random variable is represented as X of S or simply X. This random variable is represented as either x of s or simply x. What is the meaning of this? So, if the outcome of an experiment is a sample point s out of the total sample space, if I get a particular outcome that is s, small s, sample space is represented by capital S, whereas sample point is represented by small s. If a particular outcome or a sample point I consider, then its value is x and that is nothing but our random variable. For example, if we toss a coin, what are the possible outcomes? The possible outcomes are head and tail. Okay. So here the sample space that is capital S is represented as h comma t s is equal to power bracket h comma t this is the sample space total space okay so if we define a function x such that x is equal to 
1 or minus 1. x is equal to 1 for h and x is equal to minus 1 for t. If we define a function like this, then we have the values, random values for our random variable. Okay, that is, we have mapped the outcomes of an experiment here in two points on the real number line. That is, x or x now is made up of two values. Random variable x is made up of two values plus one or minus one. Now, as a second example, consider throwing of a dice. Here, sample space s is equal to correct. When we throw a dice, we have six outcomes, six different outcomes. One, two, three, four, five, six. Now, if we define a random variable R V as x is equal to s square, x is equal to s square then what will be the value of x obviously it is going to be 1 1 square 2 2 square 4 3 square 9 4 square 16 then 25 36 these are going to be the values of x this is the concept behind random variables now there are two types of random variables they are discrete random variables and continuous random variables. Discrete random variable and continuous random variable. What is a discrete random variable? Let us see now. random variable a discrete random variable drv a random variable x is called a discrete random variable if x can take on only finite number of values in any finite observation interval if the observation interval is finite in nature and in this finite observation interval if i get only finite number of values for my random variable then such a random variable is called a discrete random variable or DRV. Thus, the DRV has countable number of distinct values. We can actually count them. It is countable. Okay, That's why it is called DRV or discrete random variable. Okay, The two examples which we saw previously, that is tossing of a coin, where we have only two outcomes, head or tail, or throwing of a dice, where we have only six outcomes, these are finite in nature. That's why they belong to discrete random variables. Okay. The next one is continuous random variable. Continuous random variable CRV. Now, there are many physical systems, experiments, or trials that generate continuous outputs or outcomes. Now CRVs can be used to define the outputs of such systems. If a random variable x can take on infinite number of values in any finite observation interval, it is called a continuous random variable. This is the definition of a continuous random variable or CRV. I will repeat it. If a random variable x can take on infinite number of values in any finite interval, then it is called CRV. Example, the noise voltage generated by an amplifier has a continuous amplitude. Therefore, its sample space S is continuous. It is not discontinuous. It is continuous. And therefore, variable x has continuous range of values therefore it falls under the category of crv that is continuous random variable 
the next important term to be understood is cumulative distribution function in short cdf what is this cdf or cumulative distribution function the cumulative distribution function cdf of a random variable x is the probability that x takes a value less than or equal to small x okay here small x is a dummy variable okay so this x less than or equal to x represents an event and its probability is represented as p of x less than or equal to x therefore the cdf is defined as okay so what is this cdf cdf is defined as it is represented as capital f subscript x capital x cumulative distribution function of a random variable x for a dummy variable small okay see that the value random variable x takes on a value which is less than or equal to small x okay probability that a random variable x takes on a value which is less than or equal to small x what is that probability that probability itself is called cumulative so this capital f x of x is called the cdf of a random variable x cdf can be defined for drvs as well as crvs cdf is also called probability distribution function it is also sometimes called pdf probability distribution function but normally we use this term cdf itself in order to avoid any confusion okay or simply distribution function what are the properties of this cdf let us see properties of this cdf the first property of this cdf is that the cdf is bound between 0 and 1 that means this fx of x is always less than or equal greater than or equal to 0 but less than or equal to 1 it is bound between the values and 1 second property is fx of minus infinity is equal to 0 and fx of plus infinity is equal to 1 why is it so since minus infinity means no possible event okay so probability is 0 hence its cdf value is also 0 okay infinity means it is a sure event so it covers the entire sample space so probability of the entire sample space is always 1 therefore fx of infinity is equal to 1 which represents sure event or certain event third property is cdf is a monotonic non decreasing function of x okay cdf is monotonic non decreasing function of x that means fx of x1 is less than or equal to fx of x2 if x1 is less than x2 consider two values x1 and x2 if x1 is less than x2 then fx of x1 okay cdf of x1 is less than or equal to fx of x2 that is cdf of x2 okay that means if x1 is less than or equal to x2 so that means cdf is a monotonic non decreasing function of x 
finally Assume that we have two values x1 x is greater than x1 or less than or equal to x2 as fx of x2 minus fx of x1. This is a very important property which helps us to calculate the probability that a particular random variable lies between two values x1 and x2 can be easily calculated as subtraction to calculate the CDF of x2 we need to calculate the CDF of x1 and we need to find out fx of x2 minus fx of x1 The next important topic is probability density function PDF. Probability density function or PDF. So, how this PDF is defined? the derivative of cumulative distribution function CDF with respect to some dummy variable X is called as probability density function and it is denoted as small fx of X. Okay. So, this PDF is defined as small fx of X and it is nothing but derivative of this cumulative distribution function of x with respect to dummy variable x. This is how we define probability density function. Now, what are the properties of this PDF? Let us quickly go through it. The first property is PDF is a non-zero for all values of x. It is always positive okay, and it is never negative or zero. Second property is the area under the PDF curve is equal to 1. That is, if you integrate this fx of x between the limits minus infinity to plus infinity with respect to dx, then its value is going to be 1. Third property is CDF is obtained by integrating PDF. If you integrate this PDF, if you differentiate CDF, you get PDF. Similarly, if you integrate PDF, you should get back the CDF that is capital FX of X can be obtained from this lowercase FX of X by simply integrating this FX of X with respect to DX between the limits minus infinity to X. Four properties that is probability of the event where X lies in between X1 and X2. Probability that the value X lies in between X1 and X2 is given by the area under the PDF curve in the range x1 to x2. That is, if you integrate this PDF fx of x in between within the limits x1 to x2, then we get the probability of the event that x is in between x1 and x2. that is probability density function. The next topic or the term to be understood is
नेक्स्ट इंपॉर्टेंट टर्म इज जॉइंट क्यूमुलेटिव डिस्ट्रीब्यूशन फंक्शन ओके व्हाट इज दिस जॉइंट क्यूमुलेटिव डिस्ट्रीब्यूशन फंक्शन ऑलरेडी वी हैव सीन क्यूमुलेटिव डिस्ट्रीब्यूशन फंक्शन व्हिच इज रिप्रेजेंटेड बाय कैपिटल एफ द स्क्रिप्ट कैपिटल एक्स विद इन ब्रैकेट लोअर केस एक्स डमी वेरिएबल एक्स एफ एक्स ऑफ एक्स रिप्रेजेंट्स सी डी एफ दैट इज क्यूमुलेटिव find for two different random variables not for just one random variable x it is defined for two different random variables x and y okay hence it is represented as f of xy within bracket xy and it is equal to probability that the random variable um x random variable x lies in less than or equal to x and y is less than or equal to lower case y Okay, this is how we uh, define joint cumulative distribution function. Here we can assume that the random variables are independent in nature. Again, if you look at the properties of joint CDF, joint CDF is always a non-negative function. So its value is always greater than or equal to zero. Joint CDF is always a monotonic, non-decreasing. function of both x and y okay and the joint cdf function is continuous everywhere in the xy plane these are some of the properties of joint cdf similar to joint cdf we can define joint probability density function okay joint probability density function of two or more random variables here we have considered random variables x and y okay we have seen that pdf of a single random variable is simply the derivative of its cdf okay this is the cdf and fx of x if we get the derivative of this what we get is pdf probability density function similarly in order to get the probability density function joint probability density function of two or more variables x y we need to again do the same thing that is derivation that is uh, joint probability joint probability density function of two random variables x and y is given by the partial derivative of the joint cdf fx y of x y with respect to the dummy variable lower case x and y okay this is how we can write it now if we come to the properties of this joint pdf joint pdf is again non negative always its value is always greater than or equal to 0 total volume under the surface of joint pdf is equal to 1 that means if you calculate the integral of f xy of xy with respect to dx dy with within the limits minus infinity to plus infinity then its value is going to be 1 joint pdf is continuous everywhere since joint cdf is also continuous these are some of the properties of joint pdf then finally we have something called conditional probability density function
so this conditional probability density function is defined like this out of the two random variables out of the two random variables x and y if one takes fixed value that means it remains constant then the pdf is called conditional pdf okay so out of the two random variables x and y capital x and capital y let us take x as a fixed value that means capital x is equal to some fixed value x lower case x then we can find the conditional pdf of y which is very variable but x is not a variable now okay given that x is equal to some fixed value x as f of y y slash x is equal to f of x y into bracket x comma y divided by f x of x okay where this f x of x is called marginal density of random variable x okay similarly we can represent f x of x slash y is equal to f of x y of x y divided by f y of y okay, this is how we can define conditional probability density functions now as far as properties of conditional probability density function is concerned a conditional probability density function is always a non negative function that means its value is always greater than or equal to 0 the area under the conditional probability density function is equal to 1 that means if you integrate this fx of x slash y with respect to dx within the limits minus infinity to plus infinity then its value is going to be 1 third property is if rv's random variables x and y are statistically independent then the conditional probability density function reduces to marginal density function that is fy of y slash x the first expression simply reduces to fy of y and the second expression fx of x slash y simply reduces to fx of x okay they simply reduce to their respective marginal densities okay so these are some of the properties of conditional probability function so in this particular thing binary diagram of binary symmetric channel we understood how theory that is random variables discrete random variable continuous random variables then cumulative distribution function how it is defined what are its properties then probability density function how it is defined and what are its properties then joint cumulative distribution function how exactly it is defined and what are its properties joint probability density function how it is defined and what are its properties then finally we saw the definition so that's that's it for this uh, lecture session thank you